It's rolling. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the first meeting of February 2019. <clears throat> we have a good group this evening. Three trustees. Fire Chief. <coughs> Zoning Czar. Zop. Czar. Zop. Mr. Carol is with us this evening. And Danny Gogenauer and this closet. So, let's get started. I would entertain a motion to approve the minutes of January 7th. Seems like a long time ago. I shall move. A motion second. Then. and second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, may we vote, please. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Mutcher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Well, right off the bat, I'm going to report on things that I learned at the you know, Ohio Township Association uh, conference here this past week. And one of the things is apparently there's some way that we can make motions, we can group them all together and make them. For example, like all those ones we did. The consent agenda? Yeah, is that what it was called? We could make, we could agree to a consent agenda and then make one motion to have all those things uh, done. A part of them. So that's interesting. Mm -hmm. That could be a little time saver. <laughs> a little less time going. This well, thing, this right, thing, right, this right, thing. Right, right. Uh, that could, for instance, include the minutes and payment of bills instead of reading all the bills. But we don't have a whole lot. We don't have long meetings. No, I I, I was really only just referring to the January. Two sets of minutes. Yes. Okay. Did we vote? Oh, the yeah. second set of minutes. I think you did. Yeah. Okay. I had to take a motion to approve minutes of January January twenty twenty third. I make that motion. Mr. Crockett moves. I'll second it. Also, seconds. Any further discussion regarding those minutes? Hearing none, may we vote, please? Mr. Mutcher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Okay. Entertain a motion to approve payment of bills of $43,227.93. Broken down the general fund, $4,993.50. Fire fund, $26,402.39. Cemetery fund, $1,664.80. EMS billing $4,757.85, road bridge $5,409.39, and capital project fund for a 901-0. Is there a motion? I so move. Is there a second? Is there a motion? Is there a second? Any further discussion regarding payment of these accounts? Hearing none, may we vote, please? Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Beecher? Yes. A uh, small little batch of correspondence since the last period. Um, a general invitation to all of us um, for the um, annual county auditors or county engineers uh, dinner and report. Since this will be his last one, uh, I think it will be pretty much uh, an all Bob Geyer, Bob Geyer night. We have the health commissioner's meeting for February 7th. No, but that's coming up. We have the information for the meeting on February 7th coming up. And the minutes of their meeting January 3rd. We also have Insights newsletter from Green County Council on Aging. Uh, we have a formal letter of the um, of the property appraisal that we had done in mid December where we went around and looked at all the buildings uh, in the township and had them appraised and this is just a letter noting that that was done and it's available at our very own website we have Invitations to MVRPC's annual spring dinner on Thursday, April 18th. The same dinners. Right? Hmm? It's a lot of dinners. It is. <laughs> you can think of hungry out there in the Netherlands. Um, oh, yeah, that reminds me. There's a, oh, there's a letter uh, from MVRPC, speaking of the devil, um, asking for a survey of, of, of road improvements for Miami Township. 
And I think it includes bike paths and all kinds of everything. It's the same one we do every year. Mm -hmm. Do you want me to do it? Oh, I, yeah. I, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I was going to go to somebody. <laughs> yeah, like, does. Didn't I? Did I hand you a, um, a form, an MVRPC form, to be the representative of the T, um, TAC? I believe I filled it out and left it on the table. So I must have mailed it. I haven't seen it. Should, can I call them up? And well, yeah, I don't know. Oh, you sure you can, but she, uh, Teresa. If, if you filled it out. Teresa then... said she didn't have it. Oh, well. Well. Oh, if it was left on the, the table, mine, it might have gotten scooped up and put in with all the other correspondence. Like that. A similar thing happened last year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it took them a couple months to appoint me. Hmm. Anyway, I'll call. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. We have a notice from the Ohio Cemetery Association that their latest uh, journal is available. Uh, we have a, um, a, a <coughs> note that came in with a cover letter, I guess I didn't print that, from the Montgomery MSA about the uh, updated rebid probable cost uh, for, the, for the fire building. And uh, they, now, they now estimate the cost, this is the estimate that will go in the bid, to be $5,371. So, that's, that that's what we're shooting us an issue since we were talking $4,900,000? Mm, no. We have uh, the return of the Cedarville Cedar View Lawn Service uh, contract for 2019, which we'll I think we'll do that under cemetery. Just to that's where I put it. Oh no, I did. Oh, okay. Yeah, I did. Yeah, that's where I put it. Okay. Oh yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. We also have the invoice for our yearly Otarma uh, insurance um, package and. I think we'll just do that in one second in the fire department report because that's where the holdup was, the, uh, uh, the premiums for that. So, any other correspondence in or out this period? Very now let's move to that aforementioned fire department <coughs> report. All right. <laughs> well, since the last board meeting, uh, whatever that was, 13 days ago or 12 days ago, it was like mm -hmm. 14. Mm -hmm. 14. Probably. Well, it wasn't full two weeks ago. There are 33, there have been 33 EMS incidents and 14 fire incidents, and we've done one fire safety inspection. Um, the incidents included today a uh, rescue of a dog that fell through the ice in a private pond in Bat Township, in the Sibridge area, um, on Clear Creek Trail. Luckily, um, well, the gentleman came home from uh, for lunch. Went to the Air Force Research Lab and went out back, thought, oh, I'll do some stuff here with my property while I'm home, and mm -hmm. that was that. <laughs> the dog. Um, the dog had, no, dog had come from about two miles away, um, a family in Fairborn. There are three dogs, like, hit the road and took off. And <laughs> so somehow the dog wandered over there, got onto the pond, fell through, so the guys went out and uh, got the dog out and warmed him up. Reunited him with his owner. Thank God he had a collar and a tag. And uh, and then the owner has actually called us later to let us know that they have found the two dogs. And, uh, the whole family is doing well. So, nice. The nice job. the dog removed from the water. Um, <coughs> we, um, he was too far from shore to try and reach, and this guy's pond is eight, nine feet deep in the center. Yeah, I heard the pond. Yeah. Um, it's good to know now. Mm -hmm. We're taking over Bath Township. They've got these deadly ponds. Um, also a good dry hydrant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so luckily he had a uh, like a big wide flat body kayak. Mm. So we were able to put Nick in the kayak because <laughs> he's a hardy Norwegian stock. So we felt that was a good choice uh, with a PFD and other flotation set up and tied off and pushed him out. And he was able to kind of, the ice is actually surprisingly thick. So, well, it doesn't actually Although he was right. sliding on the ice. Kind of sliding using a pole, to, almost like Venice style, like pushing himself mm -hmm. along. Um, and got out to where the dog had broken free, and uh, there was a little disagreement. The dog, no matter how tired he <laughs> was, still would have just hop into the boat. So mm -hmm. um, they kind of had to reach over a pole, and it got a little wet. Um, Big dog? No, like a little terrier, mm -hmm. schnauzer kind of thing. I don't know. <laughs> Not a very big dog. Annie size. Maybe a little smaller than Annie. You all know Annie. But um, 
very heavy when water was <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but the poor thing had probably been there for a while. I mean, it was very tired, very cold. So um, we, uh, we did send a note to our fire engine manufacturer, Seagrave. The uh, heater on that thing is amazing. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Especially when you go to cold dogs warm up and then the owner came and everything was fine. Nick and the dog are both nice and warm. So Channel Seven came out to do a story on it. Uh, oh, is that what that means? That's why they're here. And the Elspeth News actually came to do a story on it as well. Well and the news from the past twenty five years ago, the same thing happened. What? The, there was a story about Oh really? Oh fun. You are not reading the right news. <laughs> Was it last week's issue? So that's only, like, not only on the website, oh. it wasn't. Oh, I only read the Mockingbird paper. <laughs> right. I'll get it for you. <laughs> uh, all right, cool. <laughs> uh, so that went out very well. The resident of Bath Township was extremely happy with our service and our speedy response, so that was nice. Cool. Um, oh, it seems, seems like forever ago. I gave you these fast facts, and I don't think I've been here since. So. <laughs> um, so I am to you again, just in case you lost the first copy. Um, as you can see, it was a busy year. Our uh, total incident number was 1,081. It went up 3% from last year, which uh, had dropped a little bit from the year before. But that's our all-time high now, 1,081. And, uh, we anticipate it being higher. Uh, January was our busiest month, actually, we've ever had with 100 calls. So. So the number broke down, as you can see uh, there, um, we had 763 patients that we treated. Uh, 562 of those went to the hospital. And Kettering Health Network is still the big winner here in Miami Township, um, splitting the patients, 250 to Soin and 244 to GMH. Um, Springfield Regional, or Mercy Health now, um, saw a little bit of an increase. Uh, and there was a drop in pretty much everyone else. Uh, Miami Valley dropped down. And Children's actually went up, everything else went down. So, so yeah, Kettering is still our uh, the hospital of choice of most Miami Township residents. From what I understand, according to their research, something like 70% of our residents are Kettering Health Network mm -hmm. patients anyway. So, Miami Valley's lost its reputation of being the best emergency room? Um, I think it still has a reputation of that. It's just that, especially since Swain has opened up, um, it has a really good reputation and it's Kind of like a roadblock on the way to my reality. Hard to get past, huh? Yeah. Can you know, yes. What does CAD stand for? Oh, uh, those are, oh, so the 1081 are CAD incidents, that's the dispatch. Those are what was actually dispatched to us. Computer aided dispatch. Oh, computer aided Thank uh, you. You're welcome. And then uh, we're working on a, a full annual report that will have all the detailed stats for those who are into that kind of thing. Is <clears throat> the fire calls? Mm -hmm. uh, how could you characterize those? Uh, I mean, electrical or dryer? The majority, the vast majority of them are actually not actual fires. There, I mean, obviously, because there's still a lot of buildings standing here. Alarms. Going on. They're fire alarms. They're uh, fire crews going to assist the ambulance. Uh, car crashes. Um, we do a lot of fire alarms. And then uh, a lot of what we call good intent calls. People, you know, in the summer they call because they smell smoke in their neighborhood because uh, it's like 12. Well, so you're coming out looking for a fire. Yeah, uh, and I mean, you know, we'll go some summer nights when it's really humid and there's no wind, and mm -hmm. someone decides they have to have a, back, uh, a campfire in the backyard, or there's still people with a wood burning stove going. I don't mm -hmm. understand that one. It's 112 degrees, but and that smoke just hangs all over the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. People in Yellow Springs are, are nothing if not vigilant mm -hmm. <laughs> for smoke. <laughs> so they'll call uh, very frequently for that. So we go out for those kind of things a lot. So uh, we did, actually, we did, we, we, had an uptick. we actually had fires last year here in Miami Township. Uh, and then we also had a bunch of fires we went to mutual aid. So that, that number will probably go up, but that's not all the stats yet. So. Mm -hmm. So there's no real advice to the general public about. Oh yeah, there's no like horrible trend that you know watch out. Um, you know we're not seeing. So uh, it's now causing. Yeah, you know, we're not seeing horrible things like that or some weird trend. You know, trend in fires that you know there's a whole string of fires due to X and medically you know we still have the same, the same old stuff we've always had. 
similar mix. Uh, we haven't seen uh, any kind of massive influx of fentanyl or heroin overdoses, but the last one did that. I'm just complaining about that. Uh, but in case we did, we did receive a, a donation of Narcan, which is the antidote for the narcotics from uh, Mercy Health through Cardinal Health, who makes this stuff. So, which is great. Great. He had so much, he was like, I get up to the, the hospital to pick it up, and I, I was just thinking every day, it was like five or six, you know. This guy comes up with these big five billion donut boxes. <laughs> and I'm like, my God, and there's like 40 doses in each one. Really? And he wanted to give me like eight, nine boxes. <laughs> I don't know what kind of community you think I live in, but <laughs> so, oh, I can't give these away fast enough in Springfield. Well, yeah, there's a little bit difference in our community. So. Yeah, save them because you need them in Springfield. So, yeah, or you need them, just drop out of your Anyway, so those are the numbers. Uh, hopefully, next month we should have the report. Okay. Uh, what was the rest of the oh, here, uh, The station, the furnace here in this bay was replaced after limping along for what ten years. Uh, it finally bit the big one, and unfortunately, we're not a new firehouse, so we couldn't. I couldn't anymore say, "Oh, we'll just wait." Mm -hmm. So AC uh, installed a new service last week. Big thanks to Dan, who uh, came in and moved the, the washing machine, which is directly below the furnace, and they needed a scissor lift. So. Was it twice actually? They put it back. Oh, they did? Mm -hmm. Well, he's the all or something. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. He said he told me. I think it's all hooked up. Yeah, it's all hooked up. Well, Dan was in a way. So. I moved it. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you. Um, and actually, yeah, the bay is actually suddenly warm for the first time. <laughs> never moved, so that's pretty nice. Uh, it's quieter, it's smaller. Uh, I've got their resolution 2019-07 for you all to reclassify a current volunteer, Joshua Sweet, uh, to part-time status. Um, he will pick up one of the open part-time positions we have. Um, Josh came on board six, seven months ago, um, and he's proven himself to be a real asset. Is he replacing anyone? Or what no, he's just... As we've transitioned some of the guys to 24-hour shifts, their 12-hour shifts are opening up. Mm -hmm. uh, so he's going to pick up a few of those. Uh, he works his real job. His real job. <laughs> mm -hmm. The job he has full time is with Dave Freight uh, in Vandalia, I guess. Uh, but he's now looking to get the fire service work. So he's a good guy, good head on his shoulders. Uh, guys like working. With so there's that resolution there for you all. Yeah, accept the motion uh, for resolution um, approval of resolution 2019-07, re reclassification of MTFR employee as just described. I will make that motion. I'll second it. Move and second. Any further discussion regarding this motion, this resolution? Hearing none, may we vote please. Mr. Mucher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Crockett? Yes. All right, thank you very much. Um, as stated in the prelude to the fire report, insurance update. Um, Craig Hidner, who is one of our reps with Otama, <coughs> uh, took it upon himself, because I guess that's his job, to go through our, uh, well, over the summer we had to do an inventory for the fire department. Uh, a lot of our equipment submitted and uh, one, we discovered a lot of things uh, were covered which we no longer had, and a lot of stuff was not covered that we now have. It's our first inventory in front of 10 years. Mm -hmm. um, so he went through and found some shortfalls on the equipment side. Uh, we had everything just kind of lumped into unscheduled miscellaneous fire department equipment uh, for $195,000 for the value. Um, as you can see on the pages I gave you, uh, there's <laughs> A lot more than $195,000 worth of stuff. Um, so he's recommending uh, we increase the coverage for that, which will be an additional $880 to cover all our radios, SCBA, all that kind of stuff. Uh, it's $880 for an additional $400,000 worth of coverage. So that one seems like a no brainer to me. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a lot of expensive stuff. Um, yes, we do. So the total. <coughs> Premium for the year, not for the increase, but the total will be. That I don't know. Uh, Depends on what our next decision yeah. is. 
it's right now last year, and it would have been made no changes. Uh, Eighteen thousand and change. Eighteen one thirty-eight. Was that for all of us? Yeah, that's for everything. Okay. I mean, I know that would be part of the biggest check that I have. Mm -hmm. The How other. How do you make a claim on on this sort of thing? Not that often. Um, I'm trying to think what mostly like was. accidental damage to something, or I mean, what happens? Oh, the last no. major one would be Don Rudolph's ambulance. But that was about a long ago. Yeah, was, that that was, yeah, that was a major claim. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of it. I mean, it's more vehicles and equipment, um, okay. accidents, you know, dings, that kind of things. Well, things get expensive. Yeah, the vehicles. Stainless, I understand. But this is all this other equipment, and I'm just wondering what can happen to it that you would that it needs to be covered. In mass, uh, stuff can get stolen, uh, lost, fire, fire. You know, um, it's pretty standard. I, you know, I was talking to other chiefs, and we were compared to even some of the smallest departments, like some of the creek things, and we were seriously under underinsured. Mm -hmm. you know. um, so I mean, for instance, like our hydraulic rescue tools weren't covered, um, which was kind of shocking to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Uh, our two new cots and the ambulances weren't covered. Yeah. Oh, the fancy cots. Thirty-four thousand bucks a pop. Mm -hmm. Our breathing air compressor. Yeah, you know, all those kind of stuff. So uh, none of the radios that we got. <laughs> Compressor's been covered in the past. It must have just been an oversight. I wonder if it dropped off, but yeah. But so this eight, eight, this eight eighty will cover everything. Plus, I think we have to cover it too. So. <laughs> the other side is then he looked at the trucks and it's that great question we've dealt with for years about okay, what's the actual value? What's the replacement value? If it's crashed today, what do we do? Mm -hmm. So he looked at our fleet, uh, with the exception of the staff vehicles, because they're just cars, but, and looked at, um, <coughs> excuse me, basically increasing the coverage on all of them, uh, which would have inc which would increase us up to four thousand. Well, increase our vehicle cost by forty one hundred dollars, forty one seventy. Um, looking through the chart, and I gave you guys that in your packet from, from me. Um, the two most expensive are the two oldest trucks, obviously. Uh, the tanker, which should be on its way at the door, and then Engine 81, which is a 96, and you know, we're going to have to replace it sometime in the next five, seven years. Uh, so if you drop those two off and keep them where they're currently covered, the other increases only come to 1631 and that's basically increasing the coverage to replacement value on all our ambulances. Uh, the two ambulances, the newer engine, the brush truck, and the rescue. Uh, and this, I mean, Chris remembers, and I didn't mark those too, but it's hard to keep track of how long all you guys been here. But when we had the ambulance accident, when the guy, the drunk guy hit our ambulance head on, uh, we certainly ran into some issues with the insurance claim because they wanted straight the frame rails and we didn't like what they wanted to do and our claim coverage didn't cover the actual replacement value of the ambulance. So um Lamar a couple strokes during the situation. <laughs> but anyway, so this covers the expensive stuff as it should be. I mean obviously this trucks actually the medics especially go out more than anything else and have the highest risk of being hit by something or hitting something or something like that. So and it drops this forty one hundred dollars to sixty dollars but that's just that's not good. Okay, and entertain a motion to adjust the insurance uh, policy for property casualty uh, as recommended by Chief Baldwin. I would make that recommendation. Our motions are second. Second it. Just second. Any further discussion regarding this change? But did you decide that that, that you would have a finite number? Stand by. Well, well I'm just doing that I didn't know that that was all finalized. Well, our increase in fire would be $2,511 versus $5,500. Okay. So then the motion will include the, the additional $2,511, is that what you said? Yes. Okay. Well, um, not to snag it, the situation, but Dan and I are reviewing his equipment stuff, and there's things that aren't on here. Yes, we have a dump truck. Neither dump trucks on here. 
newer ones, the 2001, 2012, and I don't see the 2000, what was the one that I was, the, at the last meeting, yeah, talking about. Yeah, it's not on there. We don't have it anymore. I know, but I mean, but it was discussed, I thought in the last, when I watched the video of the last meeting, that it was still on there. I thought so, that's, and um, so, the bo a Bobcat excavator, mm -hmm. Here's the Bobcat. Wait. That's right. That's the Bobcat. Oh, okay. Then there's the Bobcat. Yeah. Okay. Anywho. So here's another John. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, no. Anywho, so I mean, oh. Um, there may be other problems in the Bottom line project. is, I'm not sure that this is, you know, we, you discovering all that wasn't. Insured, we certainly want our dump trucks. Here's the 2004. They're all, everything's on here. Scheduled covered vehicles, 2004. What's your date on yours? 111. Oh, well. Oh, that's equipment, though. If, if that's the one with a scribble on it midway. Yeah. 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 I think this is the equipment list, not the apparatus list, with the exception of the uh, antique truck, because it's. Because the bobcats and stuff get classified. Oh, okay, so, okay. Oh, this is trucks are under the apparatus? Yeah. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah, they're on fleet of charge. Oh, they make a part. The same as the bobcats. To me, you sit on the right. Because I'm seeing, like, the mower. The mower gets all. Crack sealer. Backhoe. Right. Was there any case backhoe? Your estimator should be on there, too. It's on there. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so well, there's your right to ask. Never mind. No, let's go to check. <laughs> we, yeah, need to, we need to vote on this. There's no, there's no further discussion. Uh, Mr. Yes. Mr. Crockett. Yes. Mr. Hollister. Yes. Mr. Meacher. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, I'll be out of the office uh, from Saturday through next Wednesday on vacation. So. Okay. <laughs> uh, and then I would like to request an executive session to discuss matters of personnel related to discipline. Okay. Is that kosher? Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you Roughly 7:25. Is there a motion? Mr. Crockett moves. I'll second. Second the motion to go and move to executive session. Mr. Officer seconds. Uh, and that's it. We'll vote. Yes, we we'll vote. Yeah, Mr. Yeah. Mucher. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Crockett. Yes. Mr. Mucher. I mean, <laughs> the other one, Mr. Hollister. Yes. Big. Sorry again. We're we'll return to public session of approximately 7:35. Uh, no decisions as a result of the executive session. Okay. Um, do the policy. Have you made any? Progress, as it were, on the new fire code. We were talking about, you know, rentals of two or more units had to have working with yeah. carbon monoxide detectors. We will be sending out. Um, I think it's Monday. It's next Monday. Um, next Monday, something to all the property owners that we landlords that we want to identify. Um, we have a uh, fact sheet that's from the state fire marshal and from the Ohio Apartment Association. That'll let them know. What the change is, hopefully they already know it. But, you know, um, they will have to determine, you know, if they meet that requirement. Mm -hmm. It's got all the categories, you know, if it's forced air and all this type of stuff. Uh, and then we will begin uh, enforcing uh, compliance towards the end of April. Mm -hmm. So that gives people. What, you want to summarize again what the change is? Yes. Uh, the change is the law in Ohio with the adoption of the new fire code in 2017. Which didn't come out until 2018, which we didn't start enforcing until <laughs> just now, basically, not just now, but recently. Um, apartments, apartments, dormitories, and schools that have, I mean, apartments are two or more units, that have any kind of gas burning or fuel burning appliance heat, heaters, forced air heaters, that aren't boilers, because they're not forced air, um, have to provide for carbon monoxide detection. So that would affect dormitories on campus, except actually only one of them, because you know, oh, they are yeah. boilers. Um, a lot of the houses, you know, apartments in town, um, the schools. Uh, so the state gave everybody until February 1st. Um, but we're, we're extending that locally just because 
could have been done by, by detectors and, and mm -hmm. determine all that stuff. So uh, I'm sure that'll be a shock to some because I don't know how many like landlords are members of the apartment Ohio Apartment Association. Mm -hmm. Because I didn't know such a thing existed until I got this, the fact sheet from them in the state fire marshal. Um, and it's a pretty significant you know, change. New construction, they have to be hardwired in. Mm -hmm. um, so like the potential uh, home make apartments would have to have those mm -hmm. in every unit. Um, existing, just have to have battery powered units. Um, so and they're not that important. Is that just so, one in each apartment? Uh, the specs are listed. It's simply one in each apartment. Um, and if it's a dormitory, that's going to be one in each room. Uh, you know, the hotel will be affected by that, but we don't regulate the hotel as the state regulates that directly. So, but anybody, any building that has two residences in it counts. I believe it's two or more. Uh, two or more. Double check. So, okay, so, if you're a landlord, if you rent a house, you're not concerned. But if you right. but if you rent a room in the house you live in, or a, a building that has two tenants, yeah, two or more tenants. Well, it's not a bad idea, and. Oh, yeah. Battery powered ones aren't very expensive. Right. Oh yeah. It's, it's not a, it just took us all by. It took us. It took us by surprise. Yeah. Um, and any any maker brand other than for a new new installation right. is satisfied. Anything so as long as it's in there, um, we're happy. And interestingly, I mean, we all we myself, Danny, Joe, and Nate, all our fire inspectors had to go through a five hour code update course, mm -hmm. and uh, we all did it in different places, you know. And, I actually did one with the actual state fire marshal, and they talked about a lot of stuff, but this was not one of them. <laughs> so when I got this, you know, hey, important information email from the marshal, it was a little surprising. Um, so but it is a very good idea. I mean, carbon dioxide is definitely in, in, no. in terms of the home ink project, um, how will this affect the cost? I would think minimally. Mm -hmm. um, because, I mean, and again, I'm not an engineer, I do play on TV, but they, um, that would be installed by the fire alarm contractor, mm -hmm. and they can pretty much use the same, I, I believe they can use the same wiring for the notification, so they have to have hardwired smoke detectors. If they're smart, I'm not saying they're not, but I mean, the smart mm -hmm. route would be to use a combination unit that detects both smoke and carbon dioxide. Mm -hmm. You're going to pay a little bit more, but I don't think the cost, especially yeah, if you're buying 254 of them or whatever mm -hmm. the number, the latest number of units is, you know, they, I would think. Although I thought, should you go uh, into to this detail, I thought carbon monoxide tended to be low in the room and smoke high. Smoke is high, and actually carbon monoxide is the same weight as air, so just it's blend, everywhere. it's everywhere. It could be here right now. <laughs> Definitely is here right now. It's in the fires up. Um, so yeah, it, it, you can put your carbon monoxide detector anywhere. Usually they go low because people buy the plug-in ones, and that's what your outlet is. But there's a lot of ceiling up units that are fine. So do you have one in your dormitory? Oh god, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. There's one there. I figure with the garages here, it's an extra. <laughs> there's one oh, there and one in Denny's office. So when I come in one morning and find them all unconscious, I'll <laughs> at least I can look and see. Oh, got the 285 parts per million up here. <laughs> That's That's <laughs> yeah, it tells you what the peak is. So and let that bunk room is uh, has some. I'll bet it has some serious uh, peaks in there. Mm. <laughs> okay. Anything else? Okay, here you go. We'll move to the fire. Firehouse report, and I do have good news for Firehouse report. Mm -hmm. Beginning on Wednesday, we will be advertising for bids for the construction of the new firehouse. Yeah. Uh, bids will, or uh, excuse me, as will run three consecutive Wednesdays, and the fourth Wednesday, which is the 27th, would be the uh, bid opening date, 1:30 in the afternoon here. Uh, so, we're looking forward to having some good quality bids come in. February 27th. 27th is the bid opening date. Are we going to have a on-site? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it it well, isn't well, actually going to be on-site. It's going to be here, and it's it, on the uh, 13th. Um, and then you know, Dan will make his presentation to who's ever here, and then they will be welcome to go out to the site and, and see what they see. We just said it in the potential of bad weather, you know. Mm -hmm. we didn't want so to that's this called the pre-bid pre -bid meeting. Mm -hmm. pre -bid meeting. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, 
don't need to be concerned about the potential of another government shut, shut down, shutdown until somewhere, probably it would be mid to later March, uh, where we've already opened the bids, uh, we've had whatever it is, a week or two for MSA to go through and qualify them and determine uh, who they would recommend us to, to, uh, uh, to contract with. And at that point, uh, USD would have to sign off on the contract with the general contract. So, but again, that would probably be in March. And there's just no way there's, that would happen. All right. Anything else about the new firehouse? Let's go to the cemetery road. The administrator's here with us this evening. <laughs> Thanks for taking the time out. Oh, my pleasure. Are you wearing one of your t-shirts? Yeah. You're wearing one of your cool t-shirts? Mm -hmm. I'll have to buy you a budget. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, we've had a couple burials at Lynn Ford since our last meeting. And we have one for Wednesday and Other than that, we're not real busy. You've been busy. I've been busy. Not with the same thing. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, I do include that in my other busy mm -hmm. schedule when I get a chance to open everything up. I do. Yeah, we're going to change the same thing. Oh, my. Yeah, I'm going to open it up. I'm going to open it up. Oh, I'm going to focus on it. Anyway, talk about yourself. <laughs> <laughs> we're talking about yourself. <laughs> I was going to say, you got that backwards. Um. <laughs> Um, oh, wait a minute, I want to back up yeah, there one second, there. because we need to address this. Prior to that, did, does he usually never do the old section, leaf collection? He he done a bunch, and he was supposed to come back well, and he do that. He left his machine there. For done the old you say he, you're talking about the cedar view. Yeah, Roger. He'll do, I mean, he'll hit it before he moves this year. I know he'll, he'll finish up, but he left his machine there for a couple weeks. Well, I haven't talked to him or heard from him. But he, I called him once or so, must message. Maybe he's gone for a vacation. I think if we paid him to, to well, he'll, he'll pick finish, up the leads, he'll do it. But it I didn't know. really mean in March or April. Well, I know, he should have. He should have <laughs> kind of like when they, after they fell, right. and you pick them up. And, right. you know. and I know the weather held him up for a minute. He had good days, he could have got in. They also <laughs> fell late. Yeah, they got late. Okay, we also have uh, his, theirs, I guess it should be theirs, uh, contract for 2019. Um, is this a, still a multi-year? Yeah, it's still, it's still a three-year it's a three -year contract through the end of December 2021 at, uh, at um, 16000 even. And that does include fall lead pickup. Mm -hmm. So, is there anyone who wants to discuss that contract signing? Well, if it's a three-year contract that was already signed once, do we have to renew it each? Yeah. Well, this is this, no, this is the this is the third year or the fourth. The last, this is renewing the last contract it for three years. Three years. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. I guess I'd like to look at it. We know we'll go up for three years. How much is it currently? Sixteen. No, man. It's still. It's not changing. It went up to sixteen. It's but, fifteen. Yeah. It's fifteen. Sixteen. Twenty. This box over there. I don't. I know. I just. There's fifteen something. It's not this. I don't have. I don't have last year's final number. Oh, fifteen seven fifty. Yeah, it went up to fifty. No, 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 no. That's not. No, no, that's not. <laughs> it used to. No, it is, but, but that's for this year. I'm going to spend this much. Wait, no, this is, this is, um, We've been don't. For a year for this oh, yeah, I haven't, yeah, I haven't, yeah, I, yeah, I have not paid him for anything. Any money would come off of for this. Okay, I'd entertain a motion to uh, enter into agreement for three-year contract with CRV Law and Services. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. Move and second. I approve the discussion. 
Hearing none, may we vote, please? Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Meacher? Yes. Are we all signing this? Apparently, we are. What's the date? Okay. No, four. Ooh. Okay, what else for, uh, all right, we're done with cemeteries, let's hit the road. Oh, we've been busy Paul. Yeah. 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 How's your salt, as Bob Guy would say? Full of cash. Um, I probably used half of what I hold in last time. I got probably 40 cash. Mm -hmm. I got more back cash to it. We got more in, so we've got 100 days mm -hmm. if we need it. Mm -hmm. We need pay for when we get it. Have any problems with pavement breakup? I've got potholes. Which is to on tomorrow's agenda. Rain shine. Huh? Pack some holes. The ones that were busy and finish up on Thursday if we don't get it done tomorrow. Did that Lamont sign get replaced? I hope it was. Yeah, they took care of it. Mm -hmm. yeah, I contacted them and said, well, that's all right, we'll fix it. It's looking good. I thought we used to do that. Know, let's pull it I could do it, you know, if they gave it to us. Yeah. But when I contacted him, he goes, oh, that's all right. Huh? We'll take care of it. Okay. Yeah, no argument there. Right. I didn't argue. Um, are we going to be able to do it or not? Yep. Yes, we are. It's on the on the list of things to do. Okay. When would you like to do it? When, Wait, do it? when is it? The February 9th we have to submit? 12th. 12th? Except, uh, what's next Monday? Anybody got a calendar? That's a little too early because or too late because you got you got to calculate Thursday. Thursday. Um, Thursday. 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 Um, I, I don't I don't have the morning, but I have the afternoon to do it one afternoon. Mm -hmm. Thursday or Friday, or whatever we want. Mm -hmm. Get it this week. Mark. Mm -hmm. uh, as long as I'm back by six, I could do it Thursday. Mm -hmm. Get we'll be done by soon. Yeah. <laughs> You're driving, right? Yeah. We'll be done. Between 10 in the morning and 6 in the evening. 1 o'clock on Thursday. 1 o'clock Thursday. So. There's a van who moves me here. Yeah. That's right. Where are you going to meet? We usually meet at the garage. We usually meet at the garage. Okay. Yeah, we can meet can anywhere you want, but usually we meet there. So let's see. Garage? Let's talk. Okay. At the garage. Mm -hmm. We're not going to get everything done, submitted. I would like to suggest to the other members of the board that we uh, start uh, um, looking for a replacement unit for the Bobcat uh, at the garage. Um, it's seen a long and industrious, illustrious service, but it's it's getting old and. Yeah, a little, a little tired, a bit problematic. Um, you have, you have a date on how old that thing is? But it's, it's a ninety-three. Yeah, has a, has eleven hundred fifty hours or maybe not that? a lot of hours, Bobcat, but in that eleven hundred hours, it's been a lot of work. Hard, 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 hard hours. So I was at the OTA convention uh, with, uh, down the other day and, and talking to the Bobcat representative, who we bought other bobcats from and we deal with them and we bought the excavator, the, um, the E35 that we have and we've been happy with that and we were pretty happy with the price of it, mm -hmm. uh, what we got. I'm thinking of the same idea, we buy something gently used. I was just um, going to ask, mm -hmm. as opposed to a state bid, is the state bid still a good deal? It is at yeah. times. I, I just bringing but, it up. Like he found one that's three hundred hours or something, three fifty or something. If it's in good shape, we can get it for two thirds okay. of the cost. That's, mm -hmm. that's well, I'm not advocating for new. I'm just. Why? I know there's two different ways to get them. To more probably would be somewhere in the twenty-five to twenty-eight thousand dollar range. Is, do you, you trade just need the machine, or do you need the? 
well, attachments and accessories. Well, I don't know until I talk to him if we can keep our attachments, to be fine. But we do need to change out one of the buckets for me. I think we'd be very fortunate to find attachments on 93 that fit. Mm -hmm. I don't know how well how they've kept things like standard or not. On. Some say, oh, they work right on the new stuff, others say they won't. Yeah. I'll find out first yeah, thing when I ask him. But that's, that's going to be part of the package. Exactly. Yeah. That would save us some money. Could use the orders. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else for the road? From the road or for the road? <laughs> We're going to hit the road Thursday. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Ms. Cloth, sir? Yes. Illuminate us. <laughs> I have a resolution amending temporary appropriations. 29, it's resolution 2019 06. Whereas it is an ongoing process to determine appropriations for fiscal year 2019, and whereas it is required to submit all appropriation changes made to the 2019 budget to the county auditor. Now, therefore, the trustees authorize the following change to temporary appropriations and instruct the fiscal officer to submit them to the county auditor. That's an increase in training services by 5,000 due to the uh, large piece of training equipment that's going to be delivered on Wednesday. Hmm? It's a new Bob we just bought. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> Um, it's um, the seventy-four hundred dollar seventy-five hundred dollars um, to Fire Force Inc., which is a PO. Um, the association bought the put the down payment on it's ten thousand dollar training door we talked about last year. Uh, Cedarville Township will wait on them to pay their portion to us to reimburse us for part of that. Um, so the association paid it was ten thousand bucks total. We're going to replace the Kennedy will have one of these for the or. Can you say that again? We're the only place in the county that will have one of these forcible entry doors. One of these forcible entry, entry doors. doors. Okay. Yeah, one of the most difficult tasks for us to train on is forcing entry through doors because most people don't want us to destroy their doors. Mm -hmm. um, so this, Nate found this company, went to seven de different demos, and they took them out for cocktails. I'm not sure what happened. But, um, it's a company that <laughs> makes a, a hardy steel frame door, and, and I've train with them as well, that you can force it multiple different ways and through different lock simulations and all that kind of stuff, um, which, you know, it's expensive, but um, Cedarville Township's jumping in on it with us, we're waiting on their association to determine how much they're jumping in. How high they're going to jump? Yeah, but the associ our association chimed in for the down payment, which was 25%, so 2500 bucks. Um, we put up the rest, and then whatever Cedarville gives us will reimburse us into that. Fund. Nate asked them for third, well, a third of the cost, thirty three hundred bucks or whatever. But um, I'm thinking we'll probably get fifteen hundred to two thousand from them. So, and then they will go to Clifton. We're going to clean the bays. That we've already started cleaning the bays out. And they've got guys who are going to build some training props there and all that kind of stuff for us because we don't have any trucks there, except the brush truck. And mm -hmm. the way. It's like both the baton if it's out there. <laughs> 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 so, so the. The money from the township, the firefighter association has already been. Yeah, they've already cut a check for the same people. Yeah, they paid. Okay, they so paid that back in August okay. when we placed the order for it. Hmm. They had that long built. It's handmade, so. Not how much crash, though. <laughs> so, is there a motion to approve? Do you go train Jimmy or two? Resolution two thousand nineteen. Do they pay the money? Do they pay the fee for that? Not yet. We've got I'll a second down. that motion. Right. Move, Mr. House. The second to include discussion regarding that resolution. Hearing none, may we vote, please. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Mitchell? Yes. Um, and I um, provided to you all a copy of the, it says a training not for official use copy of appropriation status for 2019. And these are the temporary, I mean, these are the suggested appropriation amounts for 2019. But they're not set in stone. These are just for you to look at and compare to. If you don't have, I can provide for you last year's total numbers. Like if you still have your appropriation status report for the last meeting in 2018, you mm -hmm. can see there's a, it'll tell you exactly how much we, the year to date expenditure column will tell you exactly how much we spent on each line item. And you can compare that to what we've, um, you know, plugged in there for, for appropriations for 2019. I can leave my copy just. Oh, around 
on the table and yeah. look at it. Yeah. Uh, so I, re I reviewed it and it, it's pretty. I think it's pretty tight. It's pretty close to what we need to do. Uh, the appropriation uh, budgeted numbers for the year are. I think they're all uh, within our revenue mm -hmm. uh, projections. Um, and with a little, a little touch of a surplus here and there, so. I'm not sure the fire chief has had a chance to look at the numbers that <laughs> have been submitted, but he will. Oh, he will. <laughs> yeah, we will, we will. We will make sure he does. So this comes up for a vote next time. Well, it might. Yeah, it can. I mean, it depends if you all have you know questions or whatever. But, but technically, we have to send it's not in by the end of March. March. Technically, we're not required to submit our permanent appropriations until April first. So it would be the last meeting in March. So we're just moving along here. There's no harm in getting it done earlier. No, there's no harm, except for my brain hurt today, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to take a closer look myself and make sure I didn't, you know, do anything weird. So now, why did your brain hurt? Just because. <laughs> it just does. Oh, okay. Too many numbers. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, so you have it. You know what to do with it. If you have any questions, please let me know. I'll be in here. I'll help you out. Okay, anything else? Yes, anything else? Well, we still have the old Wheeling Gaunt donation. Oh, I did not. Pending. But we voted on a $500. No, I thought I, I cut that check. I, I don't recall signing it. It's in tonight's. I could have swore I cut that check a yeah, couple I, days ago. Did you see it? Yeah, I could have sworn I saw you see it. Yeah, yeah. I could have sworn I did. I've come in and cut checks, cut, you know. Okay, well, all right. Well, well, we'll I mean, find it. Uh, well, if it's not there. Here, I thought you were going to agree to dramatic increase. We haven't paid this one yet. No, that was after the first quarter, Don. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was after the first quarter. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Anything else? Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Um, I really have one important thing for you, which is the, the note that I give everybody a copy of. The Zoning Commission at its last meeting, its January meeting, um, moved and, and passed the recommendation that three sections of our zoning code be eliminated. Um, sections 8 and 9 are two-family and multi-family residents. We have no areas in the township currently zoned for those, and what's more, they require having municipal sewer and water, which we also don't have in the township. And, but ultimately, and then all three of these recommendations, the third one is elimination of the PUD chapter, they all basically are, the, are chapters that encourage development that's in contradiction with the comprehensive plan that we, that we passed. And so the Zoning Commission, as they've been going through the code, felt that these chapters were no longer appropriate. This is basically the same conversation we had about six months ago. This isn't new. They've been, you know, they had worked on it and sent it all. It took to them six months to yeah. <laughs> um, to do the processing on this. And I, uh, you know, it, it's not here yet, but I haven't changed my mind. I'm in favor of the first two, but I'm not in favor of eliminating the PUD uh, since we have an existing district, and I think it's uh, valuable to have. And we've had that discussion before, and I'm not going to have it again tonight, but. So it's you know it's just it's now time to have the public hearing and, and go through it. So okay. is, the public hearing is rescheduled. What's the time frame on that? Is that my, is that going to be my responsibility? I, it's the trustees' responsibility. I don't know how you well, guys have it at do one it. of our meetings. It has to be advertised, though, I think. Yeah, I think you've got 10, 10 days in advance to advertise. It has to be advertised 10 days before the hearing. Might be too late to get a, a, a display on a newspaper tonight. That's not why I think you have to. If you get it, you get <laughs> you it, to do it tomorrow day. morning, you could you, you, you be. You do it in a month. Have it the first meeting in so March. So, maybe, sorry? <laughs> have it the first meeting in March. Yeah. Yeah, there really isn't a rush. Well, there's a certain amount of time I'm between when yeah, you get notified and you're supposed to do it. I don't think there's any terrible pressure here, but I wouldn't, I okay, wouldn't wait longer March. than the first, the first meeting in March. We're not going to. Uh, 
and I think that is March 4th. And this should be the same as February. Okay. Are we on No. Okay. I'd like to uh, go into executive session again, please, for um, employee discipline. So I'll make that motion. Is there a second? Yeah, I'll second that. Okay. We have a discussion. Hearing none, may we vote, please? Ms. Meacher? Yes. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Lester? Yes. Richard, would you join us, please? Sure. You can do that? Sure. Okay. <laughs> no decisions made as a result of the executive session. Okay. Chief, you were saying? Right. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. So, Bath Township um, is going to do a resolution authorizing transferring the tanker, however they're doing that. But prosecutor, assistant prosecutor DeWine has to do that for them, and she's not in the office currently. Well, she's not going to be there for three months. I think I think Prosecutor Ellis can handle I would that. have thought so, but he seemed to feel that they were just going to put it off. But he said they have it insured, so we can just start using it. Mm -hmm. um, but I was mentioning that he seemed to indicate that they're feeling like that we would only use it for calls in that country, um, which I don't believe was what we I mean, even we don't use a tanker much anyway, I don't think it's going to be a big deal. That so. makes it a little cumbersome because then we'd have to keep the other tanker, right. we have to keep two of them sitting, you know, the side by side. Barely fits right. everything else. No, that won't work. Wes, Dan, can you move the washing machine again for us? <laughs> <laughs> so, based on that, then we'll start training the guys to use it. Okay. Get water in it eventually and get it. Labeled. Is it empty? Uh, it is, I believe it's empty. Drained and empty. Drained and empty, yeah. So. Yeah, Fairborn took everything off that truck they possibly could. It did. Included a lot. Yeah. Hmm. The joke was they were going to cycle on the fuel out and just kind of push over the township line. But... <laughs> that was from a fair. That was from a fair. That was from a fair. That was No comment. Anywho. All right. Hearing none, we'll move to new business. Any new business before us? Hearing none, we'll move to old business. We have two two pieces of old business to attend to. One is the, the ongoing conversation that we've had about changing meeting dates. Um, Carol, do you have a preference for when you'd like this meeting to happen? No. <laughs> Wednesdays are good. Well, we put out Mondays and Wednesdays. We kind of narrowed it down to Mondays at 5 and Wednesdays at 5. And the voting seemed to all go to the Mondays at 5. It's almost well, so, so, the, so now the, cha the bus I'm, changes from 7 to 5? Mm -hmm. Don has tango lessons at 5. I'm interested in... I, I'm glad we're planning to make a change. I would like to see it on Wednesday, uh, and I, I heard, I saw that the chief was preferring Monday at five. I hadn't heard what fiscal officer. Not with them. I preferred, yeah, I might, you know, Monday at five, mm -hmm. and in the middle of the week. I had voted for the Monday at five also. I'm always, you know, here pretty much, you know, through the weekend and on Monday anyway. It's better just to get her done. In my opinion. And a, for me. Did you have a preference? I don't really think it's been so long since you're talking about it. I like Monday at five. Mm -hmm. I should do a dinner. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the, the reason the change is so that people can attend both village mm -hmm. council meetings and mm -hmm. township trustee meetings. Uh, I'll note there's also Clifton Village. So I haven't been one of those in quite a few years. Yeah. <laughs> For good reason. <laughs> Point well, <laughs> well made. Does anybody know historically why you know all our governmental units all meet at the same time? Probably to avoid meeting. Oh, like having people come <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was this way 50 years ago. And it was I, that's what I'm saying. As far, far back as I genius. know, it's, it's always been this way. Um, so Del Rey told me. I mean, I was like, 
<laughs> well, <laughs> it's part of my orientation. No, I just, I'm always curious yeah. about what the reason was yeah. for the first, you know, for something the way it was before you, you change it. But if, if nobody can remember, then I suppose well, it's, it's always been a traditional, you know, it's late enough that the farm people can get off the field you know, and get here, either yeah. as participants or uh, or yeah, or, audience. Or yeah. the old yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, <clears throat> I'll be thrilled to see the change. Uh, I, I think we should keep an open mind uh, that whether it's getting off the field or someone who really does want to come but they their office doesn't close till five, or, uh, that we may may shift again. Well, but you you've been here long enough that you probably understand that Carol may be the only. Uh, additional body in a meeting for <laughs> 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 I will make happen whatever <laughs> this body decides uh, it needs to do. Whatever you want to do. Um, I mean, we can either just table it for the time being, and you know, if you want to, I, I want us to, I want us to change, know. and and then if there's more pressure later or other yeah, indications, I'll just change. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So let's go ahead. Change as many times as you want. Yeah, let's go ahead and. Nobody else is offering. Um, we, we changed the original planning offering. meetings the last time and cut it a half an hour out. So it happens. I mean, although I prefer Wednesday, I hear everyone else saying Monday and finally. Is there a motion to that effect? I'll make that motion. Mr. Croft moves. Is there a second? So let's clarify this is Monday at. Uh, and yes, if, but if it's a national holiday, holiday it's, 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 just, it's just changing the time of the meeting mm -hmm. from 7 o'clock to 5 o'clock. Right. Right. Correct. Then you don't have to worry about all the rest of that. <clears throat> right. Is there a second? Good idea. I'll second. Any further discussion? You know, maybe we vote, please. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Mutual? Yes. And that's effective immediately? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I'll change it on the website. <laughs> this is the hard part. I can write 2019 in my checkbook. No, no, be, no, come no, here no, five and be harder. Legal voters, there's some schedules, you know. Yeah, there's some schedules like that out there for the county. Yeah, Guy Yellow Springs is going to have a wrong. Oh no, it's. It's the guides already out. Yeah, it's already out. Yeah, yeah. 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 Last, at least for me, I don't know if anybody else has got stuff, but one last piece, uh, the, the county grant money that we received. Um, I remember being at meetings where Tom Cooler uh, spoke at length about you know, how he thought it was important to share the wealth of the county's overage in their budgets, and, uh, and he, he wanted to share it with villages and townships. And, and, it was and the only requirement is that we let them know what we use the money for. And he said, uh, you know, he really encouraged us to use the money where we could leverage that against additional funds uh, to make it go farther, and uh, that would that would probably have the commissioners smile a little bit wider on the possibility of, of doing it again in the future next, you know, next year. Um, and didn't talk about the amount of money. The, and one of the ways I was thinking that we could, because I've been involved with this uh, project that we've uh, been working on for the Yellow Springs Clifton Connector, mm -hmm. um, the bike mm -hmm. path between the two villages that's been worked on for 50 plus years at least. Well, this is the most recent uh, project to do that. And the, the project was just uh, made application to the uh, Clean Ohio Fund uh, for half a million dollars for phase one of three for this for this bike path. How much how many dollars? Half a million. Uh, but it's a twenty five percent match, so so you have to put up uh, twenty five to get the to get the uh, to get the seventy five percent. And so I thought uh, I would request this board to consider we don't have to commit right this minute, uh, but since we've already applied, you know, can't be too long. That we use this uh, 8,800 and change, I think, and then throw an additional 1,200 in, and, and just make it a flat $10,000 um, contribution for our part for the matching fund only. If if that didn't happen, 
It's not like the other part where we put in $5,000 for administrative costs and, and the workup costs and engineering costs. This would be only for the matching fund uh, if, the, if the program was not, um, uh, didn't qualify for it or uh, didn't receive it, then that money would then not be obligated uh, any further. It's just a matter of waiting. Richard, do you know how long they wait from from submission of the application on the clean fund to the no. grant? They, 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 in but terms it's be the of, I know about money. it in terms of the land trust and, and easement money, and every year it takes longer. Really? <laughs> that's, that's the general rule of thumb. So, Don, Mark, your thoughts? I think that makes sense. I like that idea. Uh, why don't we just on principle pedal for a meeting? We can pedal. To the next meeting. It's better than, than the treading water. <laughs> I can't do well, it. I, I said that intentionally, you know. <laughs> no, it doesn't hurt to think about a new idea for a few But also, days. Like pedaling. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Like pedaling. <laughs> It's a multi-use pad. Okay, we'll we'll pedal for our meeting or so. Any further new business or old business or any business? Entertain a motion to adjourn. Uh, we're adjourned. I moved and voted yes. Okay. I heard that. <laughs>